Alex Lee was over the moon on his wedding night as he tried to embrace his new bride, Jenny Young. But when he leaned in for a kiss, she gently pushed him away. Thinking she was just being shy, Alex tried again, but she quickly stepped back. Now feeling a bit upset, Alex couldn't understand why she was avoiding him on their special night. Sensing his growing frustration, Jenny knew she had to come clean. I... I need to tell you something. I'm two months pregnant. The words hit Alex like a ton of bricks. He stood there, completely stunned, before anger started bubbling up inside him. Alex had dropped out after middle school to work. Without much education, he could only find jobs on factory assembly lines, making around $500 to $600 a month, just enough to get by. As he was approaching 30, his parents were getting super worried. They couldn't stop sighing and fretting about his single status. You couldn't really blame them though, in their village, being unmarried at his age was kind of a big deal. His parents could barely face the neighbors anymore. It wasn't like Alex didn't want to get married. But let's be real, he didn't have much going for him. No looks, no house, no car. What girl would want that package? He dated a couple times before, but as soon as they found out about his situation, they'd hit him with them. let's just be friends talk. Like, he couldn't even afford fancy dates. Who'd want a future with someone like that? Alex knew modern women had standards. You needed something solid to offer. So he talked to his parents about buying an apartment in the county town, thinking that might help his chances. His folks agreed and scraped together their retirement savings. After begging relatives for help, they managed to pull together enough for a down payment on a tiny two-bedroom in a not-so-great area. Hey, at least it was in town, right? Better than a village house. Having a place gave Alex more confidence in blind dates, but the matchmakers only sent him either older women or divorcees. He wasn't feeling it. After a year of this, his parents were going crazy with worry, telling him to lower his standards and not be so picky about age or looks. That's when Alex hit the jackpot. He met Jenny Yang online. She was 23 and gorgeous. When they met in person, she looked even better than her profile pics. He took his shot and asked her out, expecting rejection. But surprisingly, she said yes right away. Alex was psyched. That same night, he proudly showed her his apartment and the property deed, saying it just needed a woman's touch. Jenny walked into the master bedroom and sat on the bed. Alex nervously sat beside Jenny on the bed. When she didn't pull away, he gathered his courage and embraced her, gently laying her down. Not only did she not resist, but she seemed experienced, taking the lead throughout their intimate moment. Though Alex wasn't exactly young anymore, he'd never experienced anything quite like this. Jenny knew exactly what she was doing, making him feel things he'd never felt before. Later, when Alex wanted more, Jenny suddenly stopped him. I got carried away earlier, she said softly. If you want more, you'll have to put a ring on it first. Looking at Jenny's beautiful face and perfect figure, way better than any of the women from his blind dates, and thinking about their passionate encounter, how could Alex say no? When he asked about the traditional bride price, Jenny dropped another surprise. My parents passed away early. I don't need any bride price, just true love. Though if you insist, a small red envelope would be nice. Alex was thrilled. He immediately shared the good news with his parents, who were pretty impressed with Jenny. Truth be told, they would have approved anyone with all limbs intact at this point. After just 10 days together, they got their marriage license. Alex gave Jenny a generous red envelope with $8,888 and arranged a proper wedding banquet. He was the talk of the village. Everyone praised his luck in landing such a beauty. Some folks were straight up jealous that this older guy had somehow managed to marry someone who outshone all the local girls. But after the guests left and it was time for their wedding night, Jenny refused him. Then came the bombshell. She was two months pregnant. The news hit him like a bucket of ice water, instantly sobering him up. Now it all made sense why she didn't want a bride price, why she rushed the marriage. She was just looking for someone to take responsibility. In a burst of anger, Alex slapped her, calling her horrible names. Jenny, holding her cheek, didn't fight back. I'll never let the child know you're not their real father, she pleaded. I'll work to support the baby. The kid might not know, but I sure as hell do. Alex shouted, We just got married and you've already made me wear the green hat. A Chinese expression for being cuckolded, his parents, who had been eavesdropping outside, 
heard everything. His father, Robert, burst in, face ashen, demanding answers from Jenny. Jenny broke down and told them everything. She had been with Kevin Luo for four or five years, deeply in love and planning marriage. But Kevin's family was poor, farmers who could barely make ends meet. They couldn't afford to renovate their house for the wedding or pay for a proper banquet. Both Jenny and Kevin worked factory jobs, barely making enough to get by. Jenny had told Kevin she didn't care about a fancy wedding or a new house, but Kevin refused to have a simple ceremony. He thought it would bring shame to have a wedding without a proper banquet. So he made a terrible decision. He attempted to rob a shop. He got caught immediately and was sentenced to prison. Jenny was devastated and then discovered she was pregnant. When she told Kevin, he urged her to terminate the pregnancy and move on with her life, not wanting to burden her. But she couldn't bear to give up their child. So she rushed into marriage with Alex. After their first time together, Jenny had noticed some bleeding and consulted a doctor who warned her about the risks of intimacy during the first trimester. That's why she had to refuse Alex on their wedding night to protect the baby. Kneeling before all three of them, Jenny begged for understanding, promising the child would take their family name and be taught to be filial. But they insisted she terminate the pregnancy. Through her tears, Jenny stood firm. If you insist on this, we can divorce. I don't care. They exchanged worried looks. The wedding had cost a fortune, and the scandal of divorce would be devastating. Plus, Alex would become a divorce, making future marriage prospects even worse. Despite their intense reluctance, his parents pulled him aside to suggest they might just have to make the best of this situation. Alex's parents reasoned that raising a child from birth would make it feel like their own. Jenny promised to support the baby herself and pointed out that she was still young. They could have their own child later. Initially, Alex couldn't stomach his parents' advice. For him, this was the ultimate humiliation, a blow to his masculinity. But walking down the street, people kept congratulating him, saying how lucky he was to snag such a beautiful wife despite his circumstances. In their area, the typical bride price started at $40,000, which he'd avoided entirely. After much thought, Alex realized his parents had a point. If Jenny hadn't been pregnant, she would never have married him. If they divorced now, where would he get the money to marry again? So he grudgingly accepted the situation, though he remained cold and distant towards Jenny, barely speaking to her. After a month, Jenny made the first move to warm things up. Being a red-blooded man, Alex couldn't resist her advances. Their physical relationship improved, and his attitude softened somewhat. He just wanted her to give birth quickly so she could focus on giving him his own child. True to her word, Jenny kept working throughout her pregnancy. She didn't expect any special treatment from Alex. Him accepting her was already more than she deserved. But being a woman, she still yearned for affection, often crying alone when things got tough. Finally, Jenny gave birth to a boy. Alex's parents told everyone it was premature, and their relatives bought the story. But instead of being at the hospital for the birth, Alex was drowning his sorrows at a bar. He admitted to himself that he was petty, unable to accept a child with no blood connection. He'd even fantasized about the baby not making it to term, but the little guy had held on strong. At the bar, a girl who introduced herself as Susie approached Alex, offering to buy him a drink. A few cocktails later, they ended up at a budget hotel. While Jenny was in labor, Alex was finding his own pleasure with his new friend. Yes, pleasure, and a twisted sense of revenge. They exchanged numbers, planning to meet again. Alex didn't even know if Susie was her real name, but he didn't care. It was just casual fun. When Jenny came home from the hospital, Alex couldn't bring himself to love the chubby little boy, though his parents doted on the baby as if they'd forgotten he wasn't their blood. Disgusted, Alex stormed out. Jenny didn't dare complain, quietly wiping away her tears. Her mother-in-law tried to comfort her, warning her not to get upset during postpartum recovery. Jenny was touched, not realizing the old woman was just worried about her ability to bear more children later. Jenny gave her mother-in-law $5,000 for postpartum care. It was all she could spare. She had some savings but needed to plan ahead, knowing Alex wouldn't spend a penny on this child. Her mother-in-law took decent care of her, but kept all the red envelope money from visiting relatives. The family actually profited from the birth, refusing to share any of the gift money with Jenny. When she tried to protest, her mother-in-law snapped. That $5,000 barely covers anything. 
a professional postpartum nurse costs $15,000. As time flew by, Jenny's maternity leave ended. She paid her mother-in-law $1,000 monthly for childcare. Over time, she could see the older woman had grown genuinely attached to the baby. Alex, however, wouldn't even look at the child. Jenny sometimes wondered if she'd made a huge mistake getting married. She also noticed changes in Alex. Before the baby, he'd wanted intimacy two or three times a week. Now that she could safely be intimate again, he rarely touched her. When she asked why, he complained about her smelling like milk. Jenny was actually relieved. Caring for the baby was exhausting enough. The truth was, Alex was getting his needs met by Susie. He'd see her every few days, treating her to meals and giving her a couple hundred dollars each time. One day, he arranged to meet Susie at Central Park. That's when he discovered Jenny's bigger secret. He saw her walking with a five- or six-year-old girl who called her mommy. His head spun as he confronted them, while Jenny, who had been talking to the little girl, looked up in shock as she recognized him. Let me continue the story with the same style and tone. What are you doing here? Jenny stammered. Alex demanded to know about the girl, asking what other secrets she was keeping. Their argument drew stares from passers-by. Jenny, worried about scaring the child and causing a scene, quietly suggested they talk at home. But just then, Susie showed up, grabbing Alex's arm with a flirtatious, sorry I'm late, honey. Though Alex quickly brushed her off, muttering about an emergency, the damage was done. Jenny had seen everything. After sending her daughter away, Jenny returned home to find Alex and his parents waiting with stern faces. Initially feeling guilty, Jenny's remorse faded when she realized Alex's infidelity. She admitted the girl was indeed her daughter with Kevin, being raised by her parents. She'd hidden this fearing Alex wouldn't accept a woman who'd already had a child. Her mother-in-law, still holding the baby, thrust the child into Jenny's arms and stormed off. Her father-in-law left without a word. In the tense silence that followed, Alex finally said, Let's divorce. Take the kid and get out. You think you're so innocent? Jenny shot back. Yes, I made mistakes before marriage, but I've been faithful since. You're the one sneaking around with other women. That's even more shameful. Alex's mother called him into her room, tears streaming down her face. If you divorce her, you'll probably be single forever. We can't afford another marriage for you. As long as she doesn't ask for money to raise the older child, just let it be. Have a baby with her quickly. She'll be too busy to think about the older one. Sighing heavily, Alex accepted his mother's advice. As the only son, he carried the responsibility of continuing the family line. Back in their room, he approached Jenny, who didn't resist. She still had wifely duties to perform. They reached an uneasy truce. Though not exactly loving, they maintained basic communication. Alex stopped seeing Susie, only occasionally texting her, realizing she was just after his money. He needed to save for his own future child. He might not care about other people's kids, but his own would be different. Six months later, Jenny announced she'd found a better paying job through a friend in a neighboring county, though it meant living away. Alex reluctantly agreed when she promised to visit twice monthly, but this distance would prove fatal to their marriage. Three months later, while attending a relative's wedding near Jenny's new workplace, Alex decided to surprise her after her shift. Jenny was about eight weeks pregnant, and he'd grown more considerate, wanting her to quit work and rest, though she insisted on working to save money. As workers streamed out of the factory gates, Alex froze at what he saw, Jenny, arm in arm with a man, laughing. When he confronted them, the man stepped forward protectively, I'm Kevin Luo. Got a problem with that? Alex's world's fun. They'd rekindled their relationship, but what about his baby? The friend's job recommendation had been a lie. Kevin had contacted Jenny immediately after his release, and they couldn't resist falling back together. They'd arranged to work in the same county, openly presenting themselves as a couple. When Alex desperately asked about the baby's paternity, Jenny claimed it was his. But Kevin scoffed with your performance? Dream on, it's mine. Enraged, Alex took a swing at Kevin but was easily pushed aside by the taller man. Despite Jenny's claims, her refusal to take an amniocentesis test spoke volumes. Alex divorced her, too ashamed to demand anything in the settlement. Jenny reunited with Kevin's family, leaving Alex alone, his parents grief-stricken with newly grayed hair. 
Who could he blame but himself for rushing into marriage without proper background checks? After a period of depression, Susie helped him get back on his feet. At just 30, he still had time to find the right person, if he was smart enough to look more carefully this time. 